Hi there, welcome back. Today we are going to talk about a very special topic in NCLEX and that's narcolepsy. So what we are going to do is we are going to look at a question first and uh, you can pause and see what are the answers, like do it for yourself. And then we will discuss about the topic, then come back and do the question together. So that way it will be really, really helpful to see and eliminate all the options and choose the correct options. Ready? Here we go. So the question is, uh, I'm just going to pause this here and you can pause it or stop it in the video and, and try to do uh, answer yourself, then we will see. But I want to discuss about the narcolepsy, the condition first, and then we will come back to the question, right? So narcolepsy is a chronic neurological disorder. It affects the brain system of that sleep wake system like how when we sleep when we wake up what is our rapid eye movement time how how fast we go into that and you know the time when we dream and we see images and stuff like that so that sleep cycle is controlled by the brain and its hormones and there is some issue with it and that's when people have the condition called narcolepsy it's a chronic neurological disorder uh, and we don't know the exact cause of it yet. There are a lot of theories still there, but there are some assumptions that uh, family history and genetic conditions may predispose someone to have narcolepsy. Also, it has been said that autoimmune disorders or people with immune system issues may have that. So it's still under you know, research. So we don't know exactly what is causing it. And there is also some hormones the scientists are able to identify that the levels of which may cause problems with the sleep cycle issue. So it's basically, it's a, it's a brain problem where it cannot handle that cycle, right? So what is actually going on is this excessive daytime sleepiness. They all sleep, we all sleep, but when we wake up, we wake up refreshed, right? And then we don't go to sleep unless we really want to. But these people, they may have excessive daytime sleepiness, irresistible sleepiness. They may even be talking to you and in between they may go to sleep. They might be walking, they might be driving, they might be typing, they might be doing something and in between they cannot resist, they just go to sleep. That is not collapsing. And there is another little term which we I would like you to remember. It's called cataplexy, which is loss of voluntary muscle control. Like all of a sudden there is muscle weakness. And that's kind of part of how we sleep. I mean, when we sleep, the brain kind of slows everything down and we have this sleep kind of paralyzes, right? And we just sleep without moving any of our limbs or anything. And that's why we don't act out when we have a dream. Otherwise we will be like, you know, doing things. So that kind of loss of muscle control is it's important when somebody is sleeping, but it's a big safety issue when someone is walking or driving or doing something and suddenly just paralyzes, you know, and then the sleepiness comes in, that's going to be really, really hard. But that's what happens with these people. And um, there are some other things I want to mention along with the NCLEX point of view. This is not a seizure disorder, even though narcolepsy and epilepsy and they kind of, you know, sound similar or very connected. It's not. It's not a seizure disorder. And this is not a degenerative disorder either, because some people may, you know, the symptoms may improve over time. When, when we say degenerative neuro disorder, those are the ones where we lose the neurons or the capability, like in, you know, dementia or Parkinson's disease or, or ALS, amyotropic lateral sclerosis, those kind of things, we might be losing the neurons. And that is called degenerative neurodegenerative disorder. But this one is not because symptoms might improve over time. Um, may not be a cure yet, but it's getting better with medications too. And another thing is it can affect anybody, um, young, old, adults, male, female, everyone can have this problem. And another thing is um, this cataplexy, especially the sudden loss of 
control voluntary muscles or sudden muscle weakness can also happen triggered by really, really strong emotions like anger, fear, stress, or excitement, laughter, that can also trigger that. So somebody will be like, you know, joking to you and laughing and so happy, so excited, and all of a sudden, they might go into sleep. And uh, there are videos of actually people having that episodes. Um, if you see it, you know, you will understand how easy it is. Um, and I will show you a small video of how a person is talking and, and all of a sudden they go into sleep, right? And they wake up fast too. But that can be really a safety concern depending on what they are doing. And um, this this called sleep attacks. And, and that's when we say it's a sleep attack when they unwillingly fall asleep in the middle of an activity. Okay, so that is the narcolepsy, uh, an overview. And there are some things which we can help or teach, um, in, especially in client teaching. We can talk about the medications which are available. Usually we use stimulants and some of the examples are given here, modernfil and amphetamine-like stimulants. Um, those are some of the options. Uh, it depends on how bad the condition is or what is the age of the patient and what is going on. So the physicians may have to decide what is best for the, for the client themselves. Uh, other things which we can teach from a client teaching point of view is to take short naps, uh, scheduled naps, so they will not be sleepy in between. Uh, it's, we cannot say 100% if they take naps, they will not have any sleep attacks, but probably it will reduce the you know, number of sleep attacks so because they are taking scheduled naps, so which is good. And having a very regular sleep schedule, like going to bed and waking up on time, even when they are on vacation, even when it is weekends, having that regularity, the brain will be trained uh, you know, with that. And that will be really, really helpful. Of course, avoiding caffeine, avoiding alcohol, no smoking, because those kind of things might interfere with the sleep cycle. The sleep hygiene, very important. And that's why we say to avoid that. Also avoid large, heavy meals because it will be difficult to go to sleep if you have a really, really full tummy, right? So that's something which we can advise them to do that. Relax before bed, take a warm shower before bedtime or do some relaxing activity. Maybe not a lot of screen time or exciting movies and things just before sleep that might affect the sleep. So you might be like thinking about it and you're still uh, having that stimulation from that uh, movie or, or something you had done just before. Um, exercise is good. However, at least four or five hours before bedtime. We don't want to exercise soon before because then the body will be in a, in a very hyper stimulated state. So have the exercise done at least 20 minutes per day. Do the exercises. That's really good. But do it before, like a few hours before it's bedtime. So those are some of the things we can teach the clients when they are already diagnosed with narcolepsy. And some of this information is going to be very helpful for you to eliminate the options which you have got with your question. So let's go back to the question and see how we can apply this knowledge. Number one, what we need to really, really understand when we get a question in NCLEX point of view, is are we looking for good things or are we good looking for bad things, right? Here it says, indicate an understanding of this condition. So when they say indicate understanding, we are looking for something good, something correct, something right. So we are going to choose only the options which are the good ones, okay, which are the S ones. So narcolepsy is a progressive neurodegenerative disorder no, it's not a degenerative disorder. It's a chronic problem, but people might get better and we are not losing the neurons over that. So because of that, this is not going to be our answer. Then taking short naps will help managing this condition. Yes, that's an answer. So two is going to be one of our correct answer. 
The client may experience sleep attacks while walking. Yes, it's possible with narcolepsy. And that's why safety precautions are very important, right? Stimulants can be helpful in managing narcolepsy. Yes, we said that some of the examples were given there. Narcolepsy is associated with seizure disorder. No, there is no connection between them. In fact, the patients might be even conscious and they know what is going on, right? Uh, apart from the seizure disorders. Taking a warm bath before bedtime is beneficial. Yes, that's true. It will help relax and, and help with the sleep. Fear or excitement can trigger symptoms related to this condition. Yes, the cataplexy can happen. The sudden muscle weakness can happen. And, and patients may have even hallucinations because of that you know, rapid eye movement, cycle, sleep cycle issue. They may even feel like there is vivid dreams and hallucinations. They might feel that too. So what are our answers here going to be? Two is an answer, three is an answer. Four is an answer. Six and seven are also right answers. And I hope you got them right because you can always go back and check on them and you can use that concept map, which we have discussed and take some notes on that. It will help you to apply to the question and get your select all that apply questions right. right. I just wanted to say one more thing today. And that is about the environment in which you are in, your surroundings. I know as people, we are so much affected by what is going on you know, around us. Now, today I want you to see this beautiful flower and there are lots of flowers here. I just focused on one and it is actually staying in dirty, muddy water. So the idea is there will be always dirty, muddy water or people or people who don't trust you in your abilities, or people who say negative things, they will be always around you. I mean, they will be there. We cannot remove that. But what you can do is to shine right through it, to make the best out of you, no matter who is surrounding you, no matter what is going on in your environment, no matter how dirty, how bad, how, you know, how negative it is, still, you will be able to bear your fruits, come out as successful, come out as this beautiful flower because the ability, the potential is God given and it is within you. Nothing can take it out from you. It is yours. So shine right through, come out of it and bear the beautiful flowers and the fruits and be successful. You can do it. I am sure about it. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.